Correlation analysis. Let's start with a short definition. So correlation is a measure that helps you define whether two variables behave in the same manner, so in a sense whether they are related. Correlation also helps you define the strength of the movement. Generally speaking, the higher the absolute value of the correlation, the stronger the similarity in behavior. However, you should bear in mind that correlation does not tell you whether there is actual connection between those two things. So, and in other words, we can check whether they behave in the same manner, but we cannot truly say whether they influence each other, and we cannot say what is the direction of the influence. To measure the correlation, we use the so-called Pearson correlation coefficient. That can be from minus one to one. Now, correlation can be positive. This would mean that two variables behave in the same manner, like it is shown here, or it can be negative. In this case, one is going down when the other one is going up, as it is shown here. Another important thing is that we can actually divide the correlation given the strength into strong, where we can see that they behave in a similar manner, and weak, where there's actually hardly any correlation. As we have said, we use the Pearson correlation coefficient to measure, and it can go from minus one to one. If it's one, then it would mean that there is an almost perfect correlation between two variables. They behave almost in the same manner, and most of all, when one goes up, the other one goes up as well with the same strength. Now, if it's minus one, then again we have a perfect correlation, but this time around we have a negative relation. So if one is increasing, the other one is decreasing with the same strength. And finally, it can be, for example, zero. In this case, it would mean that uh, they behave in a totally different manner. Obviously, the Pearson correlation coefficient can be any number between minus one and one, and we will divide them into two groups within which we will see categories. So the first one is the positive correlation, and here it's from zero to one, and we can divide it into weak, moderate, and strong or high positive correlation. The brackets are arbitrary, so in some cases you will find that they define the weak correlation between zero and zero point three, moderate between zero point three and zero point seven, and between zero point seven and one is high positive. The second option is following: so from zero to zero point three negligible, weak from zero point three to zero point five, and then from zero point five to zero point seven moderate correlation, and strong again would be from zero point seven to one. The other option is when the Pearson correlation coefficient is negative. In this case, as we said, we have negative correlation, and we have the following intervals. So the strong would be from minus one to minus zero point seven, moderate from minus zero point seven to minus zero point three, and weak is the rest. And again, you have two options. Now, the last thing that you have to know about correlation before we move on to calculation is the fact that correlation is not causation. So causation means that there is a cause and effect relationship between two variables. So one causes the other to go up or down. Correlation only means that they behave in a similar manner, but actually there might not be any relation between them. And one of the examples that you can come across is the number of drownings versus the number of ice cream sold. As you can see, as the consumption of ice cream is going up, also the number of drownings are going up. So you can come up with the conclusion that the more people eat ice cream, the more people are drowning. Therefore, if you want to decrease the number of drownings, you should actually decrease the consumption of ice cream. Obviously, this is not true. This is caused by the fact that we have those two variables actually behaving in the same manner, and the cause of those two things behaving in the same manner is the same. So this is the temperature. When the temperature is going up, the ice cream consumption is going up, but also the number of drownings is going up because people are going to the beach and trying to swim. So, in other words, the correlation between those two things is caused by the fact that they are highly correlated and caused by the temperature. So, if we mapped the drownings versus temperature, they would look like this, and the number of ice creams versus temperature would look like that. Now, from the practical point of view, in 99% of the things, you'll be using some sort of a software to calculate the correlation in Excel. This is the Corel function, and this produces you the Pearson correlation coefficient. And again, you can try to find out the relationship between two variables.